Hi, HR Nation. It's Chris Rainey. Welcome to HR Leaders, the show where we interview today's most successful and innovative HR practitioners five days a week. Today, we're lucky enough to be joined by Sheila Rutt. Sheila is the Chief HR Officer at RR Donnelly. Uh, Sheila, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, Chris. Thank you. I'm well. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Um, Sheila, fill in the gaps. Tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and, and your journey. Sure. Um, so, you know, Chris, my work life actually started at the age of 16 uh, when I got my first oh, job as me. a waitress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I, but I waitressed all the way through college, undergraduate, and graduate school. It was an incredibly valuable experience for me. Um, I learned how to read people. I also learned the benefit of teamwork. And uh, in the waitressing world, it's something we called cross serving. Uh, So, for example, when you see that uh, cup of coffee uh, and it's empty and you're holding the pot, you fill the cup even if it's not your customer. Uh, And so your coworker has to do the same for you, and that cross-serving led to happier customers, better tips. And so early on, um, I learned a lot about behavior, a lot about reading people. Some people wanted to talk. Some people didn't want to talk. And um, I learned quickly that people are very different from one another. Um, and that different communication styles resonate with people differently. So again, at a very young age, I learned that you can't use a peanut butter approach with people. Uh, From an educational standpoint, I studied psychology in undergraduate school, and then I decided to go to graduate school and studied industrial organizational psychology because I was fascinated with behavior in the workplace. Uh, During that time, I had the benefit of teaching, consulting, and also doing a corporate internship. Um, after graduate school, I had a decision to make. So I could either teach, I could consult, or I could do applied HR work with my degree. Uh, I personally was drawn to people in action and being in the middle of all of that. So my first applied HR job was with a privately held German manufacturing company called Luke Incorporated. Uh, It was an opportunity to work in not only a new environment, but a German environment, which was totally foreign to me at the time. We expanded the U.S. footprint by building a torque converter plant from the ground up. We staffed it. It was an absolutely incredible experience. And then a bigger opportunity presented itself in 2000 at Diebold. Uh, It was a bigger company, and I had the ability to really, so to speak, go global. Uh, I started as the director of organizational development at Diebold. And within three months, I took a role as the vice president of North America HR. And then within the first year, I was catapulted really to the VP of global HR operations. And I remember sitting in my first financial review and I was writing down words I didn't recognize so that I could look them up later. (laughs) And uh, I I wrote down the word revenue. And at that point, I realized after I looked it up and realized it was just sales, uh, I realized that my PhD in industrial organizational psychology was somewhat limited. So I went back to school at night to get my MBA. And, um, and I'm proud to say that now I not only know what the term revenue means, <laughs> <laughs> but I also know how to read a balance sheet. Um, so I became the CHRO of Diebold in 2005 and served that company up until this year. Uh, I never had to leave Diebold to grow, and I was really blessed to have had that experience. So when the RRD opportunity presented itself, I was extremely attracted to the challenge. The company had just gone through a massive change. It was more than a 150-year-old company that spun into three companies, and the ability to be a part of the founding leadership team that takes the company to a new place was just incredibly appealing to me. Um, I knew this was an opportunity to grow both personally and also have a very meaningful leadership impact. And now, having had the benefit of being with the company since the beginning of July, my assumptions have been validated, and I'm even more excited because I see the tremendous growth opportunities that we have, and I'm sincerely, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing that very um, rapid journey and a rapid uh I suppose uh, I, I commend you for being able to even sit in that room and have those conversations, having, <laughs> having been pushed up the level so rapidly. And I was very surprised when I reached out to you. There's not many leaders that I, that I speak with that have been in companies for 16, 17 years. So that's, that's an incredible achievement, I must say. 
um, it's you. very, very, very rare that I have that I have people on the show that have uh, been in organisations. So that's, I suppose that's a testament to them as well for for giving you that support and challenge, keeping you um, challenged and engaged. Absolutely. Um, and it's no surprise that it took a company that was going through rapid change for you to leave because you're looking to make right. an impact somewhere else, right? You're not looking for an easy Absolutely. journey. Um, you're looking for a challenge. So very, very fascinating. So where we are now um, in the organization, um, what really occupies your mind on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. Um, you know, Chris, I think that it's really impact, right? Um, I continuously ask myself, what is the impact that I'm having either on our people here at RRD um, or on the business? I think as leaders, we very often underestimate uh, the amplification of our behaviors. Um, so, so when your boss tells you that you're doing a great job, it feels fabulous, right? Um, even more than if a coworker says you did a great job. And so leaders often underestimate their ability to make people feel great, to energize them, to engage them. Um, and the flip side is also true. Right. And so every behavior is amplified in leadership. Uh, We often underestimate our power and our responsibility to our people. Um, And so as I think about my own leadership impact, number one, about my business impact, and then number two, how am I leading and how am I making R.R. Donnelly stronger and better? um, Those are the two questions that I ask myself every day. Fantastic. And uh, could you share one project or transformation story that you've been through either in the company you are in now or in the past that, that stands out to you that you're most proud of? Sure. Uh, so, so while I've only been with R.R. Donnelly for several months, I'm extremely proud of the work that we've done so far to lay the foundation for some exceptional programs that are going to benefit our employees. So uh, we have an amazingly talented HR organization with many great programs already in place. However, as a global company, there's always an opportunity to better coordinate between regions and leverage our collective skill sets to serve our employees. One great example that we just actually kicked off this morning is a global training council. Uh, Recognizing we have numerous training functions operating independently around the world, we saw a great opportunity in front of us to better coordinate our training practices globally in order to realize our combined potential and impact. So the council is going to create an inventory of training resources, develop a standard set of programs that reflect best global training practices across various impact areas, and then we'll be exporting those products uh, throughout the world of our our Donnelly. I love initiatives like this, Chris, because it shows how much you can accomplish um, as a team without a lot of major additional financial investment. And so it's an investment of time, it's collaboration. Everybody who's involved is growing as a part of the process. And we're also able to maximize our current training resources to optimize company performance. It's just a win-win. Mm-hmm. So, so that's probably the one that, again, top of mind because we just kicked it off this morning. Mm-hmm. Was that something, when you first joined, was that something what you saw as a priority? When you joined? Um, development for me is, is always a priority, but yes, I mean, I think, you know, people are thirsty to grow. Um, that was true at Diebold. I think it's equally true at RR Donnelly. Um, and, and so it's always one of the main areas within HR that I like to focus on. Mm-hmm. The reason I ask that now is, is that many companies that I'm speaking to, they're so focused on getting talent externally rather than spending their attention and time developing people they already have internally. Right. Um, right. You know, this whole talent buzzword has always been around for a long time now. Um, when I started, there really wasn't a head of talent um, along, uh, many, many years ago. Um, and the reason that I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to hear you say that you're focusing attention on this area, because I think too many organizations now are looking to kind of this magical silver bullet that exists out there that we're going to bring all this talent into the organization and it's going to transform our business. But what I don't realize is they're not focusing enough attention internally developing their people like you're doing at the moment. And that's what keeps people engaged, right? If you challenge people, you're going to keep people engaged. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, and, and, we, I, and we also, Chris, I, I think we can't underestimate that tribal knowledge um, that, that people have internally 
um, in a company to really leverage that, build on that, learn from that history is is extremely important. Yeah, one hundred percent. I complete. I completely agree with you. I had a similar situation in my last business where we got bought by a private equity company, and they kind of replaced all the senior leadership team with people that had no experience in our industry. And uh, they're very good good leaders, but they they didn't have those that that knowledge that uh, of being on the job. Right, that only that only only actually doing the job can give you that experience. And I right. think some of the best innovation exists in the minds of these people that are in your organization Absolutely. and unless you tap into that and, and give them a chance to voice their, their, their ideas um, and also create a culture where that's actually accepted that people yeah. can actually voice their ideas about being told that's not your job get back to work um, right. which is a similar similar thing that I had in my previous organization um, so really good to hear that you say that o- on that point what skills do you think now will be more important important moving forward in the future for your organization? You know, we're all going through this digital transformation. Is that something that you're conscious of that you're preparing the business for? Yeah, you know, there there are really, I think, Chris, two key areas that I believe are really important, not only for HR practitioners, but for any business professional. The first skill set has to do with technology. Um, technology is evolving rapidly. We all know that it's impacting all fields. And in order to remain relevant, it's essential that we work to remain comfortable with the latest technology and tools. Um, You know, a lot of those increase productivity and in turn make us more competitive in our respective fields. The second is more broad and it's the ability and the desire to be a constant and voracious learner. HR, like all fields, is evolving rapidly. Um, I always advise my leadership team to spend time reading the latest HR-related studies and business books, listening to podcasts, uh, networking with other HR professionals that can provide new insights, new perspectives, because really, the more you know, the more valuable you are to the organization that you're a part of, and the more that you can contribute. Um, And so, so those are, I think, the two key areas that are top of mind Mm -hmm. on that point you mentioned podcasts reading but at any other areas that you use personally to keep up to date with current events what do you find to be the most effective ways of doing that so um it's interesting that you ask there's there's an app chris that it's an app um, for everything these days (laughs) (laughs) i know speaking of technology um i recently downloaded a mobile app called blinkist okay um It's not free. There's an annual subscription as there is with most things, but I found this to be tremendously beneficial. Basically, it provides book and audio book summaries. Uh, They break each book down into what they call blinks for um, a wide range of business topics. There's personal topics as well. You know, we're all so busy these days that it can be really challenging to find the time to read a full book. And so as I'm getting ready in the morning, I'm listening to a couple of book summaries when I'm getting ready. Um, I found it to be a great way to squeeze in some quick uh, knowledge uh, before I start my day. Mm, that sounds perfect for me i'm I'm definitely gonna have to get get the link to that from you because i'm exactly the same one of the reasons why i started the podcast was for that exact reason um we're so busy now and um with so many distractions there's so much you know coming at you whether it's on your computer on your phone this is constant distractions and time time is the new currency right um that that we all operate on so um i use podcasts so you know on the on the way to work on the way home in the gym it's just the way I consume content and I I find it very hard to do to to complete books I'll start a book I'll get halfway through and then I'll get distracted so I think having an app like you just mentioned would be absolutely amazing so thank you very much for sharing that um it's going to be very useful for everyone so in your experience um of course you've you've worked with many leadership teams along the way could you share some um of your experience on on how what what have you found to be the most effective way to engage and communicate with your senior leadership teams? Sure, Um, you know, like like all senior leadership teams, at least any that I've engaged with, we have a tremendous amount on our plates. And as simple as it sounds, planning regularly scheduled conference calls with the entire global leadership team, despite the challenges that come with coordinating timing across those time zones, is tremendously beneficial. So once a month, we all get on the phone for at least two hours to talk through major projects, make sure we're all on the same page, that we're leveraging key initiatives globally. 
um, not just in every individual region. Uh, but with the amount that everyone has going on at any given time, it can be very challenging to coordinate without setting aside specific time to make sure it happens. Having said that, uh, again, with the you know the advent of technology, we use yep. uh, the Google platform and Google Hangouts is yep. an awesome tool. So you know I can be sitting on my laptop at night and you know up pops. Um, my head of HR from Asia or in you know and so so it's much easier now to uh, communicate real time mm -hmm. on topics as needed yeah do you also think do you also use things like whatsapp do you use stuff like that as well with a team or not not not, not so not we so haven't far used whatsapp no okay no no because one of the things I, I think we're in this middle ground where it's fantastic to have things like uh, google hangouts like zoom we're on now and skype but it also sometimes feels like you can never escape work do you ever get that feeling where you know because we're always right, we're right. always we're always it, on it, right <laughs> yeah it's 24 7 accessibility right mm. how do you find that balance i don't want to call it work-life balance because i don't think that exists i think they're the same thing yeah. Um, if you if you're going to be in a role like your own, then you have to accept right. that's com that comes right. in the territory. But how, how do you right. balance that between personal? Well, you know, life it's, and, it's one of those things. We were actually just yeah, we were actually talking about this uh, this morning, and you know, as as companies gl truly globalize and the workday becomes a twenty four seven yes. environment because of that globalization there is a balance that's required because people simply can't be on. It's not sustainable to, to work truly from dawn to dusk. And so the HR challenge uh, is really how do, we, how do we create some healthy boundaries in our workplace for how we accomplish work globally um, and setting some standards um, so that we don't burn people out so that we are respectful of their personal life as well as their work life um, and, and allow them to be virtual, not mm -hmm. expecting them to be in the office at eight when they've been on the phone um, until midnight the night before. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, then, and then again, it goes back to also creating a work environment that people enjoy their work. So, so I think when you enjoy what it is that you do, uh, your work and life really become one, and and you you toggle between, of course, personal tasks and work tasks, but it's all one life, and and to be mindful of that as leaders, and certainly from an HR standpoint, is is important. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, and um, a lot of my friends don't understand this. Obviously, running my own business when I'm up to sort of twelve o'clock in the morning, even one a.m. doing podcast editing or speaking with people over in the U.S. Um, you know, a lot of my wife's friends think I'm crazy. <laughs> like, you need to rest. You're going to burn out. But when they realize this, if it's something you're passionate about and you love right. what you're doing, you don't see it as work. I actually get right. excited about it. I'll happily stay exactly. up all night long working on something that I'm excited about that, that I can't wait to do. Um, but you're, you're right. You, you find that the people are, that complain, um, um, are, are, it's because they're doing a role they actually don't want to do. Um, yeah. and they're not really that passionate about. So you're not going to go right. the extra mile for something that doesn't excite you. Um, as right. well so very very interesting um, with the business you're in now obviously it sounds like it's very exciting that you're going through some big global change um, where do you see the biggest opportunity for improvement in the business and and how are you and the HR team helping the business achieve those objectives sure so um, you know our company is evolving rapidly uh, so it requires continual effort to provide the resources and information to our people uh, that enable them to hone their skills to match the company offerings. Uh, we have a very deep bench of incredibly talented employees spread across the globe, so it's really a matter of getting the right information into the hands of our organization to make sure that we're optimizing the resources that we have. That, that's, that's, I think, the, the main focus from an HR standpoint. Mm -hmm. And in terms of a talent perspective, are you going for a big shift there in terms of bringing new skill sets into your organization? Or do you really feel that they already exist in the business? It's about tapping into them and upskilling the workforce. I think it's a combination of both. So, so certainly leveraging the talent that we have and infusing new skills where needed um, is going to be key for us. Mm -hmm. 
fantastic and uh in terms of the organization are you having to rebrand in any way or do you have quite a strong brand in 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 your market at the moment forgive me obviously i don't know too much about your your right. your competitors is that something that that's a focus for you do you feel like you have a strong enough brand to attract this talent into the organization yeah i think you know that that's a very important question for us we have uh our donnelly is our Donnelly, right? I mean, it is, we, we, are, we are known as a very reliable business partner to our customers. And we pride ourselves on that. And that is something that is our brand promise and one that we certainly want to leverage and build on um, going forward. We have incredible opportunities to, um, to move in more uh, digital, uh, into the digital space yep. more than we have historically, um, but we're going to build on our foundation, which has been really the the, the legacy of the company and something again that that we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're looking at talent out there, what is it that you look for? You know, what are the, the key requirements? If I'm if I'm looking to work for R. Donnelly, what are some of the key things that you guys look for in a new employee? Right. So, you know, it does go back to passion, right? We, we want mm -hmm. people who are, are thirsty for um, an exciting opportunity. Uh, the company is definitely going through a lot of change. And so if someone's looking for a status quo uh, position, it's probably not the right company for them. But if they're looking to uh, join a company that's moving in um this moving forward and uh they really want to grow and have an individual impact uh, and you know be part of a team that's having a massive impact on the industry this is the right place fantastic very clear message and i think that's also a great message you certainly don't want people that want a job for the sake of having a job right exactly. <laughs> uh, no one wants those guys unfortunately um that leads us quite nicely on to the quick fire round um, where I'm going to ask you five questions and you have no longer than 30 seconds to give us an amazing <laughs> answer. Are you ready? All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming a, a senior HR leader? You know, I, I underestimated my ability to add bottom line business value. I think uh, in HR, we have a tendency to put ourselves in that HR only box. And until I broke that, that mindset, um, I, I was, I was limited. Fantastic. Um, what's the best piece of business advice that you ever received? Never underestimate your impact. As, uh, as I said earlier, you know, your behaviors are always amplified as a leader and in HR, you can, you're more than HR. Um, we are business partners that drive incredible value and, uh, an impact. Great. Um, what's one book that you'd recommend to our audience and why? My favorite book right now is a book called What Happy People Know. Um, it's fabulous. It's uh, written by Dan Baker and Cameron Stouse. Um, it's uh, The Science of Happiness and Physiologically, you cannot be unhappy when you're in a state of appreciation. Yeah. And so from an HR standpoint, uh, that has definitely... Um, uh, implications for recognition, uh, recognition programs and creating happy, a happy workplace mm -hmm. to drive productivity. But personally, yeah. it's a great book as well. Well, I can tell by your energy, just, just talking about the book, <laughs> you, you immediately, you immediately became more happy and more energized. So they definitely did a great job there. So I'll, I'll certainly link that in the description for everyone to read. I think I need to read it myself now after hearing you so excited about it. <laughs> Um, could you share one internet resource that you use to keep up to date with current events um, or, 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 or network with, with your peers? Yeah, you know, so I, I talked about Blinkist. Yes. Um, so, so that's really, you know, one of the resources that I use. Um, I'm also a really big fan of micro learning, you know, the, the video clips, TED Talks, Amy Cuddy, um, anything that I can find real time that's relevant. Mm -hmm. is uh, it's so easily accessible now uh, no with excuses. the web no there's no there's no excuses is there to learn exactly uh, you know, it's called google guys if you can't yeah. find it out, 
<laughs> I say it to all of my friends all the time. They're like, how did you learn how to build that computer? As you can see, I don't know if you can see behind me on the video, but there's a computer right here. I'm not sure if you can see the video anymore, but you know, I said to the team, let's team build an exercise. We're going to build PCs this week. We're not going to buy them. How are we going to do that, right. Chris? We're going to Google it. And we're going to watch a YouTube video on how to build a PC. And now we have a piece that now all of my team members in the office know how to build a PC and they all, and we all did it together. And it was a great team bond, bonding activity, although very stressful, I'll be honest, but <laughs> right, <laughs> we, right. we made it happen. Right. So yeah, I think we're in the best era to be alive right now. There's no excuses um, Absolutely. Not to learn anything right now. So very, very good advice. Um, what's one thing about your business that you're most excited about today? Well, you know, technology is advancing rapidly, and with that, so are our customers' communications needs. And, you know, we're all inundated with communications on a daily basis. All those businesses are working to understand how to break through the noise. Uh, when I look at the scale of RRD and the breadth and depth of the products, services, capabilities that we bring to the table, I'm incredibly excited, not only about what we're doing for our customers today, Chris, but also the ability of RRD to advance marketing strategies to align with both demographics, technology. You know, this in my mind is truly incredible because we have the capability to do it and to do it all. Um, and so, so that's really um, what I'm excited about. Very interesting. I think you said it uh, in, in the beginning in your, in, of your sentence, but it is also a war of attention right now, right? Whoever has the Absolutely. attention is winning. Um, and that's the world we live in right now. So I think everyone needs to keep a keen, a keen pay attention to, to that. Whoever has the attention is winning. You only have to look on social media to see that people that have the attention are the ones that are winning there. So I think a lot yes. of organizations need to reassess their focus. Um, on, on that area well look you've been a fantastic guest so thank you very much for taking the time to join us um, you, give our listeners one piece if there's one message that you could give to other HR practitioners out there one piece of advice what would that be yeah I think it goes back to don't underestimate your business value and uh, remain relevant um, continue learning not just about HR but about your business and um, solve solve problems for people, help them to realize their performance potential, both individually and within the business units that you operate. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, look, Sheila, thank you again. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Guys, make sure you head over to hrdleaders.com. There you'll find all the show notes on the episode, links to everything we've been talking about and timestamps to all the resources. Um, thank you very much again for sharing your journey with us. And I wish you all the best until we next week. Thank you, Chris.